go to Google and type Rathod's IAS. Then you can see our website Rathod's IAS Academy. There you have to click on login or register in the blue color. So if you have not registered yet, you have to click on do not have account and fill the details. So after once you have login, click on the courses. There you can see course list. And in this course list, you can see wide range of courses. Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see the current affairs of 7th June 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote, it is about empowerment of women. So this woman empowerment is one of the favorite topic of UPSC. So students who are going to clear this year prelims, you, you have to start your mains preparation and try to focus on codes that will be helpful for your ethics and even for your essay. And in conclusion of your mains answer, you can use this codes. So here quote regarding women empowerment is the empowered woman is powerful beyond measure and beautiful beyond description. So here this quote, which is mainly talking about beauty of women empowerment. So here women empowerment, so it is very, very powerful beyond a measure that we are taking and it is also beautiful beyond description. So now let us try to say first topic, it is important from our international relations, which mainly comes in a GS paper too. Actually, this topic, it is about BIMSTEC. So if you go through your syllabus of GS paper to international relations, you will be having a separate topic regarding international organizations. So there we will be studying about Asian, BIMSTEC, OIC, etc. So here this article which is mainly talking about this BIMSTEC. So why this BIMSTEC is in use? So it is 25 years. So we completed with this 25 years, okay, from this, uh, with this BIMSTEC. So because of this, here this is in use, okay. So this, this BIMSTEC, so on this June, on this June 6, it mainly completed 25 years of its formation. So because of this, this is a news. So you need to know some facts regarding this. What is this BIMSTIC? Who are the members of this BIMSTIC? And you have to know about recent. Okay, we are going to have this fifth summit of BIMSTIC. So we need to know some details of that uh, summit. And we need to know about what are the challenges we are facing. And finally, way ahead. So in this way, we need to think about all these perspectives regarding this topic. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So first of all, let us have a look over the members of this BIMSTIC. Okay, so how many members are there? Seven. So how can you remember these seven members? So B, I, M, S, T, E, C, right? So how many letters are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I will be giving you mnemonic to understand this. So for example, B for Bhutan, I for India, M for Myanmar, S for Sri Lanka and T for Thailand. So you remember, right? So there are two more important countries to your left. So apart from this easy, take B N. So B for Bangladesh and for Nepal. So in this way, you can remember these seven members of this BIMSTIC. So this is a mnemonic I used to remember. I uh, used uh, this mnemonic to remember these members of this BIMSTIC. So B for Bhutan, I for India, M for Myanmar, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Bangladesh and Nepal. Okay, or you can remember B and Bhutan, Nepal. So because they are each other, right? So you can remember this B as Bangladesh. So it is as your wish. So there are seven members of this BIMSTIC and I hope you know now which are the members of this BIMSTIC now. Right? And now let us move forward. So what is introduction? As this June 6th, June 6th, 2022, which mainly marks completion of this 25 years okay 25 years since 1997 Bangkok declaration so actually this Bangkok declaration which mainly launched the grouping that is okay best easy that is Bangladesh India Sri Lanka Thailand okay so with acronym here is best easy okay best economic cooperation that is Bangladesh India, Sri Lanka, Thailand, economic cooperation. And other three countries here, that is Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar, they joined in later to make it as a BIMC, that is Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multi-Sectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation. Okay, so what is this BIMC? Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multi-Sectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation. So if you're talking about this BIMC, 
so it is very very important and we need to know why it is very much significant so the economic and strategic significance of this uh, bay of bengal which is mainly going rapidly so day by day there is increasing of importance of this indo pacific region and there is increasing of importance of this bay of bengal region and why there is increasing of uh, this concept of this uh, power for this bay of bengal region because of this indo pacific region so the recently we came up with this fifth summit of this bimstick that is uh, bay of bengal bay of bengal initiative for multi sectoral technical and economic cooperation and it has mainly advised the cause of regional cooperation and integration so it mainly focus on this regional cooperation and as well as integration so now let us try to understand what is the significance why it is important so as you all know this bimstick which mainly provides a huge potential as it is a national platform it is mainly focusing on development cooperation rapidly okay and it is also having some unique position regarding this indo pacific region as well so apart from that this bimstick okay it is also attributed for especially geographical contiguity and we have abundant natural and as well as human resources and these countries which are members of this bimstick they are connected historically we have historical linkage uh, cultural heritage and because of this it is mainly promoting some deeper cooperation in this region so this bay of bengal region which has potential to become an epicenter of this indo pacific area and because of this there is a large increasing of interest of major powers of east and as well as southeast asian nations and next one is actually this bay of bengal region which mainly serves as a bridge between two major high growth centers of asia south and as well as southeast asia so because of this so this region is very very important and if you are talking about fifth summit it is also called as uh, this colombo summit so this uh, summit what are the highlights so we are going to see the highlights okay so here in this summit we mainly came up with this colombo package okay so this package it is nothing but decisions and agreements okay of this country which are members of this bimstick and this charter which mainly adopted formally and it mainly presents bimstick as intergovernmental organization okay so here we can see this uh, bimstick as intergovernmental organization now and finally here it mainly defines what are the purposes of this bimstick and it mainly came up with 11 objectives of this bimstick and they are mainly focusing on economic growth and as well as social progress in this bay of bengal region and they are also focusing on this multi dimensional connectivity as well so important objectives here is it is mainly focusing on economic growth and even social progress and they are also focusing on multi dimensional connectivity as well so this summit which mainly result in package of decision so they are mainly resulted in package of decisions and as well as agreements it mainly includes the grouping charter okay and actually so this uh, bimstick which is mainly called as now as governmental intergovernmental organization actually they came up with reducing of their objectives okay from 11 to namely 7 okay so first one is they mainly focused on trade investment and development and next one is environment and climate change security and including energy agriculture and food security people to people contacts science and technology innovation connectivity and actually these countries these membered countries of this bimstick they also adapted master plan they also adapted master plan for transport connectivity and this is mainly backed by asian development bank and this package which also includes three new agreements which are mainly signed by this membered states and they mainly focused on in especially in this criminal matters they mainly focused on this criminal matters and they mainly focused on this cooperation between diplomatic academics and they also focused on this establishment of technology transfer facility as well so these are some important areas of focus and if you are talking about what is the significance of this summit so this bimstick has special significance for india because in for india we have some foreign policies those are guiding principles for example we have neighborhood first policy we have activist policy 
So this neighborhood first policy and activist policy, they mainly accelerate the process of regional integration. And even we came up with this adoption, adoption of the charter at this summit. And it mainly promises to re-energize 25 year old grouping as well. And even they had some important focus that is leading on the security, okay. Because India, which is mainly going to lead the security pillar and as well as energy related things. So, if you are focusing on what are the issues that are mainly faced by this BIMSTIC. Yes, we have bilateral issues between the members. We have bilateral issues. For example, you can talk about India, Bangladesh regarding this Rohingya issue and India, Nepal issue that you know, right? So, regarding uh, blockade and regarding this Kalapan, this Usta region and India, Sri Lanka also, we have some issues okay and we can talk about there are number of issues that are mainly present with the with these countries okay that is bilateral issues so one of the major obstacles which may enhance the cooperation among the countries is Rohingya's crisis so an important crisis that we are facing between these countries that is altering the some bilateral relationship between the countries here is Rohingya crisis okay so this Rohingya crisis which mainly weaken the bilateral relationship between Bangladesh, Myanmar, talks etc and next one is there is inadequate focus on economic cooperation. So there is a many many unfinished tasks and new challenges that are mainly seen. Okay, because of this that is mainly leading to increasing of burden on the responsibilities of this grouping. So for example, a, we have mainly came with signing of FTA, Comprehensive Free Trade Agreement in 2004. But this is mainly standing away from the goal. And next one is we have number of unfinished projects are there okay so for example if you're talking about expansion of connectivity and coastal shipping road transport inter intra regional energy great connections so there is some lack or there is some works which are mainly unfinished and next one is here bcim that is bangladesh china india and myanmar so formation of energy sub regional initiative that is bangladesh china india myanmar it is a here one we can see here china which is mainly acting as a proactive member here so because of this we are having some exclusive potential of this bimstick okay in this bimstick we are mainly going to create some more doubts so what is the way forward so if you're talking about way forward here we need to go for multilateral discussions so we need to focus on the complexity of our domestic and geopolitical factors and we need especially sustained bilateral and the group level discussions to prevent problems such as rohingya crisis and we need to ensure equally sustained potential engagement with partners such as Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, etc. And we need to focus on boosting of connectivity and cooperation for India's vision to bolster trade connectivity in grouping. So we need to go for here free trade agreements. Okay. So we need to focus on increasing of connectivity and cooperation. So whatever the projects which are mainly unfinished, so we need to go for completion of those projects and we need to learn the lessons from the past. So having walked away from this mega trade block like RCA, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. So India came out in November 2019. Okay. So here now India which is mainly going for signing of free trade agreements with the number of countries. So in this way we can go for, okay, we can go for this BIMSTIC such that we can get some good trade markets. And next one is India as a torch bearer. So for the revival grouping to realize its trade and economic potential. So India will have to take a leadership role now. Okay, India need to take a leadership role and we need to facilitate greater cross-border connectivity and flow of investment okay, by the low barriers. And if you're talking about other areas of focus, so focus should be more in the future on new areas such as blue economy, digital economy, promotion of exchanges, links among the startups, micro, small and medium enterprises, etc. And now I want to give you a means question based on this topic that is the quest of economic growth and development of this BIMSTIC region. So can be achieved with enhanced cooperation among the member countries. So India has a key role in making the BIMSTIC more vibrant, stronger and result oriented comment. So this question you have to write and write this answer for this question within 250 words. And now let us try to say next topic it is regarding sex workers right. So recently Supreme Court gave a landmark judgment regarding this sex workers. 
So now let us try to analyze this topic in a very great detail. So this topic is important from our GS paper to under society and social issues. So because these sex workers are also part of our society. So we need to recognize their rights. So they are also having fundamental rights like article 21 of Indian constitution. So if you see here recently Supreme Court recognized sex work as a profession. So recently Supreme Court which mainly recognized sex work, sex work as a profession. And here Supreme Court also observed that its practitioners, they are entitled to dignity and equal protection under the law. Okay, here who are practicing this sex work, they should be entitled, they should get dignity and as well as equal protection under the law. So here the court which may invoke some special powers under this article 142 of Indian constitution. So actually this article 142 is one of the discretionary power of supreme court okay discretionary power of supreme court so under this article 142 of indian constitution supreme court can exercise of its uh, of its jurisdiction and it may pass such decree or make such orders as it necessary for doing complete justice in any case or matter which is pending before it so whenever there is any case or any matter which is pending before it here supreme court can use this uh, discretionary power under on article 142 of indian constitution so even in 2020 here national human rights commission also recognized sex workers as informal workers so if you're talking about some highlights of the supreme court judgment so if you're talking about for the first time uh, here regarding this criminal law so uh, sex workers they were entitled to get equal protection of the law and criminal law and they must apply equally in all the cases on the basis of age and consent okay sex workers are entitled to equal protection of the law and criminal law and it must apply equally in all cases on the basis of age and consent so when it is when it is clear that sex workers is an adult okay whenever any sex worker who is an adult then whenever she is participating in the sex work with consent then police they must refrain from interfering and taking any criminal action so if we are talking about article 21 of indian constitution which mainly declares that no person no person shall be deprived of his life and as well as dignity except there is a procedure which mainly established by law so here right of uh, children of the sex worker so what are the rights which are present so a child of the sex worker should be should not be separate so we should not go for separation of the child okay from the mother on the grounds that she is in sex trade so basic protection of human decency and dignity extended even to the sex workers and even to their children and if there is any minor who is found living in a brothel or with uh, sex workers so it should not be presumed that child was trafficked and if there is any case that sex workers claims that he or she is her son or daughter so when so at that time we can go for doing of test test to be done to determine if the claim is correct or not okay so in this case minor should not be forcibly separated from mother so we're talking about medical care so sex workers who are victims of sexual assault they should be provided every facility including immediate medical legal care so they need to get immediate medical legal legal care if there is any victims of sexual assault and it's one is role of media so media should take at most care not to reveal the identities of the sex workers during any arrest or any raid or any rescue operations so if you're talking about some provisions which are mainly related to the supreme court they are the first one it is regarding immoral traffic prevention act so the legislation which is mainly governing sex work in india it is immoral traffic prevention act okay so legislation which is mainly gov governing the sex work here is immoral traffic prevention act and we are also talking about the suppression of this immoral traffic in women's child children act which also enacted in this year 1956 so these are some important provisions which are present in india okay against the traffic of people and next one here is we have justice verma committee which mainly set up in year 2012 to 2013 so this justice verma committee has also acknowledged that there is a distinction between women who are trafficked for commercial sex exploitation and as well as adult consenting women okay adults consenting women who are in sex work of their own volition 
and next one is recent judgment that is like buddha dev karma's kar versus state of west bengal 2011 case supreme court in this case which mainly says said that yes sex work have a right sex workers they have right to dignity so this is about this topic and now let's try to see next topic it is regarding surrogacy act so i explained you what is surrogacy surrogacy means nothing but i am taking the rent of a womb okay so once delivery is done so i will be taking my baby okay i will be inserting inserting a blastocyst in a rented womb and after 9 months so so after that she will be going into delivery so after delivery i will be getting back my baby with me okay so this is a surrogacy under this surrogacy we have two types altruistic surrogacy next one is commercial surrogacy altruistic surrogacy means the that rent of uh, womb the woman who is very much close relative to me and in this commercial i am going to give a lot of money for her okay so if you are talking about this article you have to know about what is the Sarog- surrogacy act and why it is in debate in the news channels now so recently a petition which mainly filed in this delhi high court that a single man who had no right to go for surrogacy and a woman who is having her own child she can also not go she can also cannot go for this surrogacy so because of this a challenge a petition which mainly challenged in delhi high court so this petition which mainly challenged about the exclusion from availing surrogacy under this assisted reproductive technology act so assisted reproductive technology means for example you can talk about ivf you can talk about tissue baby like that and even surrogacy regulation act of 2021 so the petitioner mainly argued that the personal decision of a single person about the birth of baby through surrogacy that is right of reproductive autonomy is a facet of right to privacy which mainly guaranteed under article 21 of indian constitution so petitioner uh, petitioner she and he mainly argued that so whenever these people they are excluded from this surrogacy means it mainly violating the article 21 of the indian constitution so the right to privacy right of privacy of every citizen or person to be free from unwarranted government intrusion into matters fundamentally affecting a decision to bear or to beget a child through surrogacy cannot be taken away so if you are talking about some provision regarding the surrogacy act so what is this act which mainly talking about so if you are talking about this act and some provisions so under this act of surrogacy regulation act of 2021 a woman who is widow or divorced woman and they should be at least 35 to 45 years okay they can go for the surrogacy and next one is a couple who are between this 25 years uh, to 45 years they can go for surrogacy and especially here it is mainly allowing only altruistic surrogacy but not commercial surrogacy So, if you are talking about what are the challenges, so there is exploitation of surrogate and as well as child that mainly seen. So here many people they are arguing that whenever we are going for the surrogacy, so there is also some type of exploitation which is mainly seen. Exploitation of poor women under surrogacy and protect the child's right to be born. And next one here is reinforces patriarchal norms. Yes, this act which is mainly reinforcing traditional patriarchal norms. of our society which mainly attributing that no economic value to women's work so because of this it is mainly affecting this article 21 of indian constitution and also denies legitimate income to surrogates so banning of this commercial surrogacy means it is mainly denying this legitimate source of income for the surrogates okay and next one is emotional complications so after delivery or during this 9 months of process here woman she can develop uh, much affection towards the child so because of this there might be some complications like emotional complications that we can see and next one is no third party involvement so in an altruistic surrogacy there is no third party involvement is there a third party involvement which mainly ensures that the intended couple will bear support and medical and as well as other miscellaneous expansions and expenses during this uh, surrogacy process and if you're talking about the question which appeared in your previous year's prelims regarding this topic here is so in the context of recent advances in human reproductive technology pro nuclear transfer is used for okay it is mainly used for prevention of mitochondrial disease in the offspring so at that time there is one disease which is mainly seen in news regarding this mitochondria okay mitochondria is a powerhouse of cell right 
So now let us try to see next topic. It is regarding draft on social media regulation. So this article is important from your GS paper to under quality point of view. And this article is important from your mains point of view especially. And if you see the context, it mainly says that on June 2nd, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, they put out a draft proposal. And this draft proposal which mainly seek the comments from the general public. Okay. But this draft which mainly withdrawn on the same day. So because of this, this is a news. And this draft, which is mainly focusing on increasing of measures or stringent measures. And these measures are mainly focusing on strengthening of oversight mechanism on regulation of content in the social media platforms. So this draft, which mainly stated that the measure dealt with the new and emerging issues. And it is mainly focusing on addressing of gaps or loopholes in the legislation. And they are mainly focusing for more open, safe, trusted and accountable okay accountable things to its users so if we're talking about details it mainly says that it rules it rules 2021 which mainly mandates social media platform social media platforms they need to exercise greater diligence okay with respect to the content on their platforms and they are mainly required to establish a grievance redressal mechanism and remove the unlawful and unfitting content okay and next one is this grievance officer so whoever is there so he is responsible for receiving and as well as resolving the complaints okay so this it rules which mainly talks about about uh, about the social media platforms and it is also mandating the social media platforms to exercise this uh, diligence content in their platforms and they said that they need to establish this grievance redressal mechanism and through this grievance redressal mechanism, so they are responsible for mainly receiving and as well as resolving of complaints of our users. And next one is she or he is also expected to acknowledge receipt, okay, receipt of complete uh, complaint within 24 hours and appropriate action should be done within 15 days. And whenever there is any content portraying is happening, for example, if there is any nude content or if there is any individual in full or partial nudity in sexual act okay at that time okay at that time we need to remove that content within 24 hours uh, within the receiving of complaint okay and the privacy policies of the social media platforms they need to ensure that users are educated not circulating copyright information okay in the in the social media platforms and there should be like no information regarding defamatory or ethnically objectable or threatening unity, integrity, defense, security of our country. So that information should not be there in the social media platforms. And if you're talking about this draft, which mainly talks about two important changes. So first one is, so they want to come up with this graph appellate committee. Okay, so this graph uh, grievance, uh, sorry, this grievance appellate committee. So this grievance appellate committee, which is mainly functioning over and above the intermediary grievance and redressal officer. So we will be having intermediary grievance or redressal officer. So above him, we need this grievance appellate committee. Okay, so in the, if there is any case of unsatisfied resolution, okay, so then they can even go to the court as well. And next one is, so whenever there is any complaint which is mainly received means they need to resolve this issue within 72 hours of reporting. So these are the two important changes in, in the graft. And now let us try to see next topic. So it is one of interesting topic I can say. So more nations express outrage India flees OIC. So here our BJP leaders, okay, BJP leaders, they made some statements regarding this Prophet Muhammad. So because of this here, Islamic countries, they are mainly showing some uh, showing some distress regarding the statements which are mainly given. So because of this, this is the news and this topic is important from your international relations. So India on Monday, they hit out the organization of Islamic cooperation over the statement which mainly condemning this de derogatory comments which mainly made by two BJP leaders on Prophet Muhammad and Islam. So even there are other nations like uh, Gulf uh, Gulf countries like UAE, Oman, Jordan, Pakistan, Malis, they came out with a strong against this remarks which are mainly made by these BJP leaders. So even Qatar, Kuwait, Iran, they summoned Indian envoys to protest controversial remarks which are mainly made against this Prophet Muhammad 
okay which mainly made by this bjp smoke man's people so if we're talking about anger in the arab world yes there is anger so the development followed by the ground swell of anger in this western asian regions because of the statement which are mainly made by these two bjp spoke man persons about about prophet muhammad is five and as well as islam so these remarks were seen as a bla uh, blasphemous that is against the law okay against the god in this arab countries so if we are talking about what will be the possible impact on india so we will be having impact on bilateral relations and we will be having impact on our economy as well so if we are talking about what will be the possible impact of of this event on india so what happened our vice president venkai naidu began his visit to doha so as part of a three nation tour so media reports that here this meeting okay lunch uh, banquet lunch with this prime minister in this uh, doha which mainly cancelled and next one is iranian protest came 3 days before iran's foreign minister he is he is going to visit india so it is also cancelled and next one is about 57 nation or nation of this uh, organization of islamic cooperation they issued a strong condemnation so the organization also had linked the comments to the previous decisions for example ban of hijab in karnataka and next one is violence against this minorities and demolition of their properties so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic title says strategic missile agni 4 successfully test fired so this article is important from your science and technology which mainly uh, important especially from your films so now let us try to see the context So India, which mainly successfully tested this intermediate-range ballistic missile Agni four, okay, and in this test they found that it met all parameters. So if you see details, it mainly says that so this Agni four it is a nuclear-capable long-range ballistic missile, and the range it is more than three thousand five hundred kilometers, and it is a surface-to-surface -surface missile, and it is mainly indigenously developed, okay. ingeniously developed agni 4 and it is a two stage missile and if you are talking about agni class of missiles so agni class of missiles they are the main stay of india's nuclear launch capability and they also includes prithvi short range ballistic missiles and even submarine launcher ballistic missiles and fighter aircraft so if you see this image you can see this is agni 1 Agni two, Agni three, Agni four, Agni five, and Agni six. So now let us try to see yesterday's questions. So first question it is regarding regarding request for two or more states. So according to Constitution of India, if the Parliament makes a law which mainly based on request of two or more states, such a law, then such a law that can be amended or repealed only by Parliament. so they cannot go for repeal or uh, uh, repeal or amended by the concerned states or by the both parliament and concerned state or parliament or concerned state it is only done by parliament itself so option a is the correct answer and next one is the constitution of india has at the right the president to declare emergency in case of difficult situations which arise suddenly so with reference to national national emergency consider the following statements so first one is it can be declared even before the actual occurrence of the war yes and it can be declared on a particular district yes it can continue up to maximum period of 3 years it is not that like a specified period so it can be like indefinite okay so you can eliminate this statement so that option will be 3 1 and 2 only and today's questions are the first one is regarding judiciary and second question is regarding article 356 So please try to read the statements pause the video and try to give the correct options in the comment box okay so these are some important articles of discussion and now let me make a small announcement so we in rathor size we came up with this mains answer writing codes of one year so here we are giving weekly targets and here we are going to complete our gs1 gs2 3 and 4 within this one year So, if you are following this timetable or schedule that we are giving, we will ensure you that. So, you are going to complete GS one, two, three, and four within one year for sure. So, based on that weekly targets, daily one question will be given, and we are also going to give you modal answer. 
so your answer evaluation will be also there and one to one mentorship so the entire cost of this course for one year is just 7200 rupees so please try to join this course so this will be very very useful and there will be also essay writing practice and even case studies also on sundays and apart from that we also came up with this entire foundational course for 2023 here we are going to discuss each and every topic which is present in your syllabus from gs 1 2 3 and 4 and we are providing more more than 600 hours of uh, video classes and on current affairs there is a special focus will be there on every sunday there will be the class of this current affairs for the students who join this foundational course and one more thing here is we are focusing on conceptual clarity and the cost of this foundational course here is uh, just 60000 rupees with the validity of 2 years and apart from this if you want to take the single courses like only geography only history economy like that you can take the single modules also that facility is also available and for the demo videos please visit our website rathorsisacademy.com there you can watch three demo videos without paying a single penny so after watching those videos only you can go for purchasing of that course so if you have any doubts so please call me on this number 8074765513 and this is also whatsapp number you can also message me on this number and one more thing is to get this pdf of this class you can join the telegram channel so telegram channel link is given in description box so now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf so this is our today's hindu just wait for a minute so this is our today's hindu and the date here is june 7 2022 and this is delhi edition so the first topic it is regarding more nations express outrage india flags oic so here you need to know some facts regarding this oic i forgot to include those facts so it is your homework today i didn't give you any homework right so here please refer some facts regarding this oic and here you can say prime minister urges bank chiefs to make loan process easier okay so this will be very important and here you need to know about this gen gen samrat portal the prime minister he mainly urged bank chiefs to make it easier for the people to get loans to this gen samrat portal and you can have a uh, you can have the greater chances to get questions regarding this gen samrat portal as well and if you move forward leave this uh, city page and state space that is there is nothing much important in today's newspaper and you can directly move on to our editorial page so editorial page in page number six i discussed about this article uh, regarding the subway of bengal dream that is bimstick and there is one article i found that this is mostly political article so i avoided this article so if you want you can read this first topic and here in this op-ed page i discussed about the sex workers rights so and there is one article regarding this online education is encouraged in india and you need to focus on this ugc regulations as well okay so this is very important actually i need to take this topic but if time permits in tomorrow lecture i will be taking so if if time will uh, does not permit means you have to refer this article by your own and if you move forward in this text and context i discussed regarding the surrogacy act i discussed about the social media regulations and if you move forward in this newspaper that is page number 10 so there is one article regarding this agni 4 i discussed this topic and also there is one article regarding this draft it rules so this article is also very important as i, I discussed about the social media okay draft social media rules in the same way you have to refer this uh, article as well and if you move forward in this 12th page you can see policies can change in public interest which mainly says by supreme court so here this article says that so the government can change its policy stopping prior agreements with the private parties and we need to come up with the policy change in the public interest okay so this is the thing which mainly said by supreme court and you can think about this topic once and if you move forward in this world page there is nothing much important and in this business page you can see policy certainty transparency critical for asset monetization so you need to know about what is this asset monetization so this topic will be dealt by servant sir in the weekly current fights of economy 
and there is one article regarding this power deficit may persist as thermal capacity lags behind demand so this topic also we discussed number of times regarding so what are the problems in our power sector so these are the some important articles that appear in our today's newspaper so by this i'm concluding i hope you enjoyed this lecture so please subscribe to rathor's is and don't forget to like share and comment my videos and don't forget to enroll to the courses that we are offering in rathor's is academy thank you so much go to google and type rathor's is then you can see our website rathor science academy there you have to click on login or register in the blue color so if you have not registered yet you have to click on do not have account and fill the details you have to give your name email id your mobile number and password and finally you can click on this register button and once your details are filled then registration will be successful and click on okay and come back and click again on login and register and you have to log in now so after once you have log in click on the courses there you can see course list and in this course list you can see wide range of courses so you can see indian his indian society is he said ethics international relations essay and if you buy all the courses then we will be giving access to all these courses like history economy geography and this is our mains answer writing course there you can see different batches are there and this is our prelims test series if you want to watch demo videos you have to click on play course and in history we will be having five modules so there if you want to see demo videos in that so and so part of history you can click on that play course and before payment you can see only three demo videos and after payment you can see all those videos will be displayed on the screen You will Hello be students. having Welcome settings to Rathor's regarding IAS. quality and My also speed. I am your history faculty. According to Today, the part of the world history lectures, the most it's important topic history. in the world history of the UPSC and CSC exam that is the French next, Revolution. Let us try to see other subject, international relations. Click on play course, and the same thing that will follows. Before payment, three demo videos. After payment, every video will be displayed on screen. and you can click on the play button then full screen and then settings so this will be follows to all hello all welcome courses. to the lecture a very important topic we are going to cover up in today's lecture that is indo pacific every day in newspaper we are hearing this word indo pacific region and the important this is regarding polity and the faculty is shashwat rago ma'am Hello and welcome everyone to Rathor Science. This is Shashwat Raghav, your Polity Faculty on this platform. We'll be basically covering our GS Paper Two, and we very well know in GS Paper Two we have governance, constitution, polity, along with social justice and IR. By me, your constitution, polity, and governance subjects will be covered. In GS, in UPSC side for GS Paper Two. only the subjects have been mentioned the governance constitution polity but faculties this is about economy so economy is taught by servants so these are some demo videos you can watch like this an economy Welcome which is like 112 hours of uh, course friends from this class on what hi friends my name is sarvan kumar i am your economic faculty welcome to rathor's ias friends in this class we are going to study about the gross value added what is the meaning of this gross value added now under this we have three heads basic price right factor of and next is science and technology you can click on the video and you can click on play button and full screen 
Welcome to Rathod IAS. Going to the DNA. That uh, kind of bank is called as a DNA data bank. So you need to create a DNA data bank at a national level, okay, where the information of all the uh, criminals, okay, all the suspects. Okay, So these are the number of courses that you can watch the demo videos and after once you watch the demo videos and after once you satisfied so click on the buy now button and after that you need to enter some details later on you can click on proceed and you can give your mobile number and also email id and finally you can use this razor pay payment system for the purchasing of these courses.